Tap the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss out on unique stories from 101 India. A few weeks ago, I took up a challenge. Along with one of India's premier expedition teams, I would attempt to be the first to scale the virgin peak of Shahi Kangri. My producer Yash and I didn't get the required permissions to go through with the climb. After grueling training with the team, we were asked to stay behind while the expedition crew set out to make the first ascent. Buddhism teaches that nothing happens by chance. Maybe I had a different purpose of being in the mountains with nothing to do and yet so close to one of the biggest monasteries in India. I decided I'd go there to try and understand the life of these monks better. The monastery was located at the top of a rocky side valley on the north side of the Indus River. It was established in 1831 by Lama Sultim Nima. The place was simple, austere and really quiet. I decided I'd talk to some of the monks, the lamas here. See what a life of meditation and prayer was all about. The first lama I met was a young one. only 21 years old he was just starting his spiritual journey in the mountains of the 21 years he had lived he spent 15 studying buddhist philosophy in karnataka jule jule aapka naam jinchen rosh he tells me this monastery used to be his temple it has been a place of worship for him since he was a child was being a monk something he wanted as a child as well chote the dam devata and teacher banna chahiye teacher ha to wo kyun nahi bane A teacher. I guess he hasn't strayed too far from his childhood dream. Buddhist monks and their teachings have been a guide for many, including me. I ask him if he has any worldly desires. When I ask him about the problems of youth, of addiction, violence, he tells me the only solution is to clear your heart. Kind, kind, is is. Oh, oh, that, 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 Be kind to people, he tells me, and karma will smile back at you. Somehow, we still fail to follow through. I met one of the senior most lamas at the monastery next. He came to the monastery at the age of fifteen. His father got him there. What about you, man? I don't go there. I ask him if he's ever bored living his life away from it all, the world itself. He tells me he likes it this way. It's a luxury to have a place where one can concentrate, meditate, and pray. Buddhism teaches how human life is very precious. If one has been blessed with life as a human. then one has done something right in the past hence this positive karma the lama doesn't have any worldly desires he reminds me how buddha himself attained nirvana without a wife or a family a lot of children who come to study here come from poverty the monastery has free schooling for everyone from the fifth standard kana gar kyo zara ola yul mala ngela ana gora ma ta ba jao je wa zara ola ana lama jen jen ani jo ya But children, not children. I don't think they spend much time thinking about these things. Yes, Aru. Yes, Aru. Not when there are simpler things to be thankful for, like a game of cricket or football. Buddhism teaches to be truly happy is to be happy like a child, because unlike adults. 
children don't really need a reason to be happy. He left me with some advice. Again, something simple that usually goes ignored by us. I think we all need practice in that department of learning how to be good to all living things. It's not a very good world. I guess that's the point. Be the change or the good that you want to see in the world. So could I ever be happy like a child? For no reason whatsoever? I'm not sure. But this visit to the monastery did help me get over my initial mountain climbing disappointment. And that works for me just fine.